Welcome to Pediatric Clinical Skills from PedsCases.com and the Stollery Children's Hospital. Today's video will be discussing otoscopy. Otoscopy is an important part of the physical exam that all clinicians must master. Once the proper technique is learned, otoscopy is not difficult to perform. Using the steps outlined in this video, the correct way to perform otoscopy will be discussed, which will not only limit the movement of an uncooperative child, but will allow adequate visualization of the tympanic membrane and external auditory canal. As with any procedure, proper hand hygiene is needed. Therefore, students must always wash their hands before otoscopy is performed. The next step in this procedure is to secure the disposable plastic ear speculum to the otoscope. Different speculum sizes exist, so care must be taken to choose the correct size. The speculum is then placed on the head of the otoscope and rotated, which locks it into place. This prevents it from moving and becoming dislodged within the auditory canal. The handle of most otoscopes includes a dimmer switch that can be rotated to change the intensity of the light source. In most cases, the brightest setting is used. Once these steps have been completed, the child must be positioned appropriately. Younger children rarely tolerate this procedure without moving, which not only can cause pain to the child, but will reduce the ability to clearly see the anatomy of the ear. To minimize these complications, restraining the child is often necessary. To do this, have the child sit on the parent's lap with one hand placed on the child's forehead to stabilize their head against the parent's chest. The other hand of the parent should then be placed around the shoulders to minimize any movement in the arms and upper body of the child. At this point, the otoscope can be grasped by placing the thumb on one side of the neck of the otoscope and the index and middle finger on the other side. The handle will then rest in the crease between the thumb and index finger. This method of holding the otoscope is ideal as it allows for manipulation of the head of the otoscope with minimal movement of the hand, allowing it to remain stationary. Before the otoscope is inserted into the external auditory canal, the hand must be stabilized against the patient's head. This is needed to ensure that if the child moves, the otoscope will move along with the child and will not cause damage to the ear. In right-handed people who are examining the left ear of a patient, the ulnar surface of the right hand will rest against the mastoid bone on the patient's head. When examining the right ear of a patient, the ulnar surface of the right hand will rest on the patient's cheek. The opposite is true for people who hold the otoscope in their left hand. After the dominant hand has been stabilized, the free hand can then pull the pinna in the superior and posterior direction, which will straighten out the external auditory canal, putting it in line with the otoscope. Pulling on the pinna is extremely important, as without this step, visualization of the tympanic membrane is much more difficult. When put together, these steps allow for a timely yet accurate assessment of the tympanic membranes and external auditory canal. The final step in this procedure is to remove the otoscope before the hand is removed from the child's head. This limits the amount of injury and pain that can occur if the child moves unexpectedly. At this point, Otoscopy of the one ear is complete, and should be completed on the other ear. The steps needed to perform otoscopy are listed here, and include washing the hands, placing the disposable speculum on the otoscope, turning on the light and setting it to the correct intensity, positioning the child, if it's appropriate, grasping the otoscope between the thumb and index and middle finger, and stabilizing the dominant hand on the child's head. The procedure is continued by pulling the pinna in the superior and posterior direction. The otoscope can then be gently inserted into the external auditory canal and the anatomy observed. The otoscope can then be removed from the external auditory canal and the hands of the clinician can be removed from the patient's head. These steps should be repeated on the other ear. By following these simple steps, otoscopy can be completed quickly with minimal discomfort to the patient and can be an invaluable part of any physical exam. 
be sure to visit pedscases.com for more great resources on pediatric education.